Skylar Niece was the epitome of youthful vitality and promise. A 16-year-old brimming with dreams and the infectious energy of adolescence. Living in Star City, West Virginia, she was known for her bright personality, a beacon of light to her friends and family. Her close relationships, especially with her two best friends, were the cornerstone of her social life, embodying the deep bonds typical of teenage friendships. Skylar's aspirations reached beyond the small-town confines of Star City. She harboured ambitions that mirrored her vibrant spirit, dreaming of a future filled with possibility. On the night of July 6, 2012, the fabric of normalcy in Skylar's life was torn apart. She returned home from her job at a fast food restaurant, shared laughs with her parents and retreated to her room, a night seemingly like any other. However, as darkness enveloped Star City, an unsettling silence took hold. Skylar's routine of nightly conversations and text exchanges with her parents came to an abrupt halt. Unbeknownst to them, Skylar slipped out, embarking on a journey from which she would never return. Surveillance footage later revealed her leaving her apartment, sealing the mystery of her disappearance. This marked the beginning of a harrowing saga, as the sudden cessation of communication with Skylar triggered a growing sense of unease and desperation among those who knew her best. The tone of normal teenage life in Star City was overshadowed by a looming cloud of dread, setting the stage for a chilling story of betrayal and loss. The disappearance of Skylar Niece sent shockwaves through the community of Star City, West Virginia. Initially, friends and family clung to hope, believing in a swift resolution, perhaps thinking Skylar had simply spent the night at a friend's house without notice. However, as hours turned into days with no word from Skylar, that hope began to fracture, giving way to a palpable sense of dread. The community's initial response quickly transformed into a concerted effort to find her. Volunteers assembled en masse, distributing flyers and canvassing the area, while law enforcement initiated a comprehensive search operation that spanned the region. Social media platforms buzzed with pleas for information regarding Skylar's whereabouts, amplifying the urgency of the search. Local businesses and residents contributed to a growing reward fund, signalling the community's collective resolve. Despite the tireless efforts of volunteers and the meticulous searches conducted by law enforcement, including combing through local woods, reviewing surveillance footage and interviewing potential witnesses, no substantial leads emerged. With each passing day, the absence of any sign of Skylar intensified the community's fear and desperation. The growing sense of dread was mirrored in the faces of Skylar's parents, who faced the media's glare, voicing appeals for their daughter's safe return. The community, bound by a shared hope for Skylar's safety, also shared the growing realisation of the gravity of her disappearance. This period marked a transition from confusion and concern to a sombre acknowledgement that finding Skylar might not bring the resolution they desperately hoped for. The search for Skylar knees became not just a mission to bring a young girl home, but a poignant reflection of a community united in the face of a bewildering and heart-wrenching ordeal, with Sheila and Rachel at the forefront, embodying the anguished hope of finding their friend. Amidst this turmoil, Skylar's friends, notably Sheila Eddy and Rachel Schoaf, were visibly active in the efforts to locate her. They participated in the search, helped distribute flyers, and were among the most vocal on social media, calling for Skylar's return. Their apparent distress and involvement in the search efforts concerned friends desperate for any news of Skylar's whereabouts. As the search for Skylar Niece grew increasingly desperate, the focus inevitably turned to the last known interactions she had before her disappearance. The police investigation, initially casting a wide net, began to narrow, 
centering on the testimonies and actions of Skylar's closest companions, her two best friends. Their accounts of the night Skylar vanished were scrutinized, revealing a tapestry of inconsistencies and oddities that would soon become the crux of a deepening mystery. The initial statements given by the friends described a normal evening that ended with Skylar returning home. However, surveillance footage contradicted this narrative, showing Skylar leaving her apartment and getting into a car, never to return. This glaring discrepancy raised the first red flags for investigators, prompting a more detailed examination of the friends' timelines and activities on that fateful night. Further interviews with the friends were marked by a palpable tension. Their stories were fraught with inconsistencies, each retelling revealing new discrepancies. Eerie reenactments based on the friends' accounts, juxtaposed with the known facts, added a chilling layer to the unfolding narrative. These dramatizations, designed to visualize the discrepancies in their stories, underscored the growing disbelief and suspicion among law enforcement and the community. The friends' inability to provide coherent, consistent accounts became a focal point, suggesting a deeper, darker secret at the heart of Skylar's disappearance. As the sun rose over Star City, her disappearance weighed heavily on the local police force. From the outset, investigators faced a baffling case. A teenager vanished without a trace, leaving behind only fleeting moments on surveillance footage. The initial hours were critical, and the police swiftly began piecing together Skylar's last known movements, seeking any clue that might reveal her whereabouts. Theories abounded. Some officers speculated about a possible runaway scenario, pondering if the pressures of teenage life had driven her to seek an escape. However, this theory quickly crumbled under the weight of her strong relationships and happy demeanor, reported by those who knew her best. It seemed unlikely that she would leave without any communication, abandoning the life she cherished. Attention then turned towards more sinister possibilities. Could she have been abducted? The absence of any struggle or additional evidence at the scene puzzled the investigators. Without demands or a ransom note, kidnapping seemed implausible, but remained a line of inquiry due to the lack of better leads. In the days following Skylar Niece's disappearance, the community of Star City, West Virginia, rallied together in a desperate search for the missing teenager. At the heart of these efforts were Skylar's friends, Sheila Eddy and Rachel Schoaf, whose visible distress and active participation in search activities painted them as deeply concerned. Their involvement seemed to reflect genuine worry for Skylar's well-being, making them pillars of the community's collective hope. Sheila and Rachel were among the most vocal advocates for finding Skylar, utilizing social media to spread awareness and organizing search parties. Their tearful pleas for Skylar's safe return resonated with the community and law enforcement, drawing everyone closer in a united front of concern and determination. The sincerity of their actions, however, belied a disturbing undercurrent of deception that was yet to surface. Their adeptness at displaying concern misled not only Skylar's family, but also the entire community and investigators, directing the search away from the truth lurking beneath their facade of friendship. As the investigation into Skylar's disappearance deepened, small cracks began to appear in Sheila and Rachel's stories. Discrepancies in their accounts, initially overlooked in the chaotic early days of the search, started to draw the attention of law enforcement. The persistent efforts of investigators to piece together Skylar's last known movements led them back to her friend's contradictory statements, igniting the first sparks of suspicion towards them. In a chilling twist, 
that unraveled within the heart of Star City, West Virginia, the veil of innocence surrounding two of Skylar Niece's closest friends, Rachel Schoaf and Sheila Eddy, was mercilessly torn away, revealing a narrative so dark it plunged the entire community into disbelief. Rachel's confession emerged not merely as a betrayal of friendship, but as an admission of a meticulously planned murder, executed with a cold-blooded precision that defied the understanding of all who heard it. Under the guise of a typical teenage adventure, Rachel and Sheila lured Skylar out into the dead of night on July the 6th, 2012. The destination was a secluded woodland, a place far removed from the safety and warmth of Skylar's home. Here, the horrifying reality of their intentions came to light in a gruesome display of premeditated violence. With chilling detachment, the girls turned on Skylar, transforming from trusted friends to executioners within moments. The attack on Skylar was brutal and relentless. Armed with a knife, Rachel and Sheila commenced their assault, each stab a terrifying betrayal of the friendship they once shared. Skylar fought valiantly for her life, her desperate attempts to defend herself only serving to intensify the frenzy of the attack. The air was thick with the sound of struggle, the darkness pierced by Skylar's cries for help that went tragically unanswered. As Skylar's strength waned, the brutal nature of the attack became even more apparent. The girls continued their assault with a horrifying zeal, inflicting wound upon wound until Skylar lay motionless. The forest, once a backdrop for teenage escapades, became the silent witness to a chilling act of cruelty. In the aftermath, Rachel and Sheila attempted to cover their tracks, burying Skylar's body in a makeshift grave, erasing any trace of the night's events. They returned to their lives with a shocking ease, embedding themselves in the search efforts and playing the role of grieving friends, all while harbouring the dark secret of their deeds. The revelation of Skylar's murder at the hands of those she trusted most sent shockwaves of horror through the community and beyond. Rachel's confession, detailed and unflinching, laid bare the gruesome details of the attack leaving an indelible mark on the hearts and minds of all who followed the case. This plot twist, unveiling the monstrous actions hidden behind the facade of teenage normalcy, stands as a haunting reminder of the depths of deception and the capacity for darkness within. In the wake of the harrowing confession that tore through the facade of normalcy surrounding Rachel Schoaf and Sheila Eddy, the question that haunted everyone's minds was, why? How could two teenagers, entwined in the fabric of Skylar Niece's life as her closest friends, orchestrate such a chilling act of betrayal? The unravelling of the motive behind Skylar's murder painted a dark picture of jealousy, secrets and fractured relationships that had festered unseen beneath the surface. Investigations and confessions began to peel back the layers of the girl's psyche, revealing a tangled web of emotions and motivations. At the heart of this tragic narrative was a toxic mix of envy and perceived slights, emotions powerful enough to drive these young women to the unthinkable. The motive, as unearthed through painful admissions and evidence, suggested that the bonds of their friendship had been irrevocably damaged by hidden resentments and escalating tensions. The dynamics within this trio of friends had grown increasingly complicated, marked by arguments and jealousy. Skylar, once the linchpin holding this group together, had become the unwitting focus of her friends' growing animosity. This deep-seated bitterness, cloaked in the guise of teenage drama, spiralled out of control culminating in a plot born from a desire to remove Skylar from the equation permanently. As the investigation delved deeper into the why, it became clear that the murder was not a spontaneous act of violence, but a calculated decision made by Rachel and Sheila. This chilling realisation 
forced those following the case to confront the horrifying truth that the motive was rooted in the most human emotions, gone terribly awry. The betrayal was not just in the act of murder itself, but in the breakdown of what it means to be a friend, to love, and to trust. This depth of deception, culminating in Skylar's tragic fate, reveals the darkest aspects of human nature and the catastrophic potential when envy and hatred take hold. In the somber aftermath of Skylar Niece's murder, the quest for justice took center stage as the legal proceedings unfolded. Rachel Schoff, overwhelmed by guilt, confessed to the crime leading to her and Sheila Eddy's arrest. Their confessions laid bare the harrowing details of their betrayal, propelling the case into the judicial system. Rachel's plea deal and subsequent sentencing to 30 years in prison reflected the gravity of her actions, while Sheila faced life imprisonment, a stark testament to the severity of their crime. The courtroom became a crucible of emotion as Skylar's family friends and community members confronted the reality of the loss inflicted by those they once trusted. Each hearing, each sentence pronounced, echoed the themes of loss and betrayal that had permeated the case. The impact on Skylar's family was profound, their grief palpable as they grappled with the unimaginable pain of losing a daughter to the hands of her friends. As sentences were handed down, the broader community of Star City and beyond was forced to reflect on the fragility of trust and the depths of deception. The pursuit of justice for Skylar served as a painful yet necessary journey for all involved, seeking to find some measure of peace in the wake of such a senseless tragedy. The case left an indelible mark on the hearts of many, a reminder of the lasting scars inflicted by betrayal and the enduring strength of those who seek justice in the face of darkness. Thank you.